In this series, I won't be showing you how to prepare, cook and serve a peacock with ginger sauce, <coughs> nor how to stuff half a cockerel and half a piglet, sew them together and spit roast them. No, this series is all about easy medieval food. Easy to cook and delicious to eat. It's medieval food for today and every day. I'll show you how you can impress without trying too hard. Today I'm cooking crispels. I'm making gluten-free crispels, so I'm using gluten-free bread flour, which importantly contains xanthan gum. You can, of course, substitute plain or all-purpose wheat flour. I'm just making a small batch using 80 grams of flour and one large egg. You need to beat the egg well, then gradually work it into the flour with a fork. If it's a bit sticky, just add a little extra flour. And then you gather the dough into a ball with your hand. Next, on a floured surface, gently knead it for about a minute. There's no need to overwork the dough, you just want it to be smooth. Shape the dough into a rectangle and cut into eight equal pieces. You can weigh them to get them approximately the same, trimming a bit off one to add to another if necessary. Shape each piece into a disc, then gently roll out onto a well-floured surface. Keep turning and adding flour as you roll to stop the dough sticking to the surface. The dough is pretty forgiving, so don't worry if you wrinkle it up a bit during rolling. It's easy enough to rectify. What we're going for here is thin crispels, as thin as paper, according to the original recipe, so that's about as thin as when rolling out pasta. Use a large cutter, about 9 centimetres, 3.5 inches in diameter, to cut out circles. You can rework the trimmings to make extras. It's time to fry. You need a medium pan, half full of cooking oil, and heat it to 180 degrees Celsius, 360 Fahrenheit. Pop your dough circles in one at a time and cook them for about 30 seconds until lightly golden. The sesame smells wonderful. I'm brushing each crispel with warmed dark sesame oil. Crispels were served in the household of the English king, Richard II, but the idea of using sesame oil is my adaptation from medieval Arabic recipes. Fabulous. Some melted honey here. And that's just going to drizzle all over them as well. It's been warm, the honey. Absolutely divine. I hope you can hear the crunch. But the mix of the warm honey and that little background of sesame to 
give it that uh, medieval Arabic flavour. It's just superb. I just need a good cup of strong black coffee with these now. Not very medieval, but just perfect. Links to downloadable recipes from the Easy Medieval Food series are in the video description below.